When this woman snapped a photo with a gorilla, she never expected what she saw. Hanabiko, who is more fondly known as Coco, was a female western lowland gorilla who was born on July 4, 1971 and who died on June 19, 2018. She was arguably one of the most, if not the most, famous gorillas to have ever lived due to her amazing work with Dr. Francine Patterson, who was otherwise known as Penny. Francine helped teach Coco a variety of amazing skills, the most incredible being American Sign Language, ASL, which allowed the gorilla to communicate with humans like it had never been seen before. Coco's story started in the San Francisco Zoo, where she was born to her biological mother Jacqueline and father Buana. She was the 50th gorilla to be born in captivity and one of the first babies to be fully accepted by her mother. Coco remained with her mother until the age of one when she was taken to the zoo's hospital to be treated for a life-threatening illness. At the time, Penny was a graduate student at Stanford University. Upon hearing of the baby ape's condition, she, along with Charles Pasternak, began to care for Coco at the zoo as part of their doctoral research. When Penny first met Coco, she instantly knew that there was something special about this amazing ape and having grown up wanting to communicate with animals, she asked the zoo if she would be able to try and teach Coco sign language in the hope of finally crossing the boundary between animals and humans. The zoo agreed to loan Penny and Pasternak the baby animal under the condition that they would spend at least four years with her. Because of Coco's illness, she had to be separated from her mother and because of the length of time that the two were apart, the staff feared that Jacqueline would no longer accept her back. Even though Penny was teaching Coco ASL, the zoo still had ownership of the animal and could request her back at any time. Not wanting all of their work to go to waste, Penny decided to set up the Gorilla Foundation, a non-profit organization which she founded in 1976. By doing this, the young scientist was able to raise the money to buy Coco off of the zoo. After purchasing Coco, the foundation moved her into a trailer near Penny's home in Woodside, California and was able to move Coco into a preserve in the Santa Cruz Mountains. It was here that the gorilla lived most of her 46 years and where Penny, her instructor and caregiver, taught Coco over 1,000 signs of what the scientist called Gorilla Sign Language (GSL). This put Coco's vocabulary at the same level as a three-year-old human. In contrast to other experiments attempting to teach sign language to other primates, Penny had also simultaneously exposed Coco to spoken English from an early age, and it was reported that the gorilla understood 2,000 words of spoken English in addition to the signs. In an interview at the time, Penny said that Coco liked to use sign language creatively. She occasionally makes up new words, signs, which are amazingly appropriate as she is able to string known words together in novel and meaningful constructions, she confessed. Coco also has a sense of humor and plays word games. Along with her extraordinary abilities to learn sign language, Coco also loved to have pets, one of which was a small kitten which she famously named All Ball and whom she loved very much. She received the animal on her birthday in 1984 from a selection of abandoned kittens. Coco cared for the kitten as if he were a baby gorilla. Researchers said that she tried to nurse all ball and was very gentle and loving. They believed that Coco's nurturing of the kitten and the skills she gained through playing with dolls would be helpful in Coco's learning how to nurture an offspring as they had plans to mate her with a male gorilla in the hopes that she would teach their offspring sign language without any interference from humans. Sadly, this did not happen as she died before she became a mother. The amazing gorilla also adored taking photos. Penny first discovered the gorilla's fascination with the camera and photographs when the scientists decided to take a selfie with the animal. After snapping the quick picture, Penny looked back closely at the picture, only to be shocked. Coco was looking directly at the camera as if she knew what it was and how it operated. From that moment on, it seemed as if Penny had unlocked a new interest in Coco. Whenever the scientist had a camera around, the curious gorilla would ask to play with it. One of the very first pictures that Coco snapped was a self-portrait in a mirror. In the picture, Penny can be seen holding a camera on a sort of grip at the bottom, whilst Coco is looking through the eyepiece and pressing the trigger button. This remarkable ability to understand how to use a piece of human technology was only one of the ways that Coco amazed people. The picture itself was featured on the cover of National Geographic's 1978 magazine. Coco was also featured on the cover of National Geographic in 1985 with a picture of her and her kitten, All Ball. Whilst not all of her photos made it into magazines, Coco's love for the camera never stopped. 
She took many pictures throughout her life at the Gorilla Foundation, including selfies where she would turn the camera around and point the lens at herself before snapping the picture. These incredible photographs helped to show Coco's life as she lived it and give a better insight into the behavior and thoughts of this amazing animal. It is believed that Coco was able to take these pictures of herself and others due to her intelligence. Between 1972 and 1977, the gorilla was administered several infant IQ tests, including the Cattell Infant Intelligence Scale and Form B of the Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test. She achieved scores in the 70 to 90 range, which is what you would expect a human infant that is slow but not intellectually impaired to score. According to Penny, however, it was specious to compare her IQ directly with that of a human infant because gorillas and humans mature at different rates, so using a gorilla's chronological age to compute their IQ results is not very useful when compared to a human score. Even though having an IQ similar to that of a toddler is something that most people might not find that impressive, for a non-human animal to display signs of such intelligence and understanding was remarkable. The research done with Coco led to other scientists questioning how we treat animals such as dogs, cats, and even mice, and whether they were able to feel emotions and understand complex thoughts like the gorilla. Because of how remarkable Coco was, she soon had a variety of famous friends who all wanted to interact with her. Throughout her lifetime, she met celebrities such as Fred Rogers, Betty White, William Shatner, Flea, Leonardo DiCaprio, Peter Gabriel, Sting, and most famously of all, Robin Williams. The pair met in 2001 at the Gorilla Foundation in California and appeared to hit it off straight away. Robin had attended the foundation to take part in a campaign to raise awareness of the dangers wild gorillas face due to poaching. When he came across the famous gorilla, they immediately formed a bond and began to communicate using the sign language Coco had been taught. Penny said in an interview about the two that Coco instantly connected with Robin. Coco, like us, can sense a person's nature, and in this case, she was quickly drawn to Robin's warm heart. Robin was equally impressed with Coco, saying at the time that meeting Coco was unforgettable. Robin went on to become an honorary co-chair of the Gorilla Foundation's campaign to create the Maui Ape Preserve. Eventually, in 2018, at the age of 46, Coco passed away peacefully in her sleep. The Gorilla Foundation said that she had died of natural causes. She was showing age-related ailments, slowing down, losing her appetite. Fortunately, she passed away peacefully in her sleep, chief operating officer of the Gorilla Foundation at the time. And whilst it is a sad thing to have happened, Coco helped teach the world an incredible amount about her species and helped to highlight just how much damage humans are doing to the world and all the animals who live in it. Hopefully, we can all learn something from Coco and help make the world a better place for animals like her. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome tales.